Hey, Michael. Hey. What's How's it going? How you doing? Oh, good. Same old thing. But other than that, not much. Ready for spring. Yeah. Seems like it's been winter, winter on the whole West Coast. <laughs> yeah. How cold is it there? 60? Oh, my God. It's a birthday boy. You look like a bouncing baby boy. <laughs> yeah. I had to. Uh, trust me, Amber, I didn't want to shave it off, but I had to because I kept getting these freaking ingrown hairs was so thick. I'm just, okay. So I just said, heck with it. I shaved it off. I had to go to the doctor the other day and they had to drain it. And so I your said, mom, heck with it. Your mom has a big smile in heaven because she says, you look just like the day you were born there, Jason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They told me, wow, you look a lot younger. I said, yeah. <laughs> but... That's awesome. I was wanting to grow it clear down to belly, but I this grows too thick and it don't do my face any good, so that's the heck with it. It's only hair it grows back. Yeah. Like, well, that was everybody's day. Let's see if I pretty good. Good here. What's the weather today in California, Michael? Um, first day it's been nice. Yeah. We're getting snowed in. Broom County is already closed. Hi, Portia. Oh, somebody just tried to join, but what the hell happened there? Might be Marianne, 808. I don't know. Uh, I didn't say a number. It was like a weird... Could have been her. Oh, yeah. Some people can't... She can't join from her phone. She doesn't have an iPhone or something. She has to do it only on her computer, or I don't know. Um, I don't think... I think Zoom, you can... Is in Android. I thought so too. We've done it on Jay's phone. Pretty sure Zoom's on everything. I mean, that's kind of where I'm at with it. For either one of you, I think it needs to be. How are you doing, Portia? Good. I'm good. How are you? Hi, right, doing good. You got I was sitting here, went and bought a big blizzard. Okay. You got all <laughs> the hairs cut. I had to. Mm -hmm. It was my beard so thick i get ingrown hairs and i was oh. wanting to grow it longer way down here but i i couldn't i had to go to the doctor the other day i'll freaking ingrown hair so i was you kept getting pulled over off. what's that <laughs> i'm getting right. pulled over at checks road checks right <laughs> yeah. they're like who is this santa <laughs> yeah everybody goes because you're like, wow, 10, you're like 10 younger. pounds lighter now too many selfies always want pictures taken <laughs> Santa, there he is. <laughs> yep, I look back. Yeah, at my I don't think like, I've ever seen like... you with your hair so short. Yeah, I told him to take it all off. I was frustrated the other night. I said, <laughs> was like, who, is said "Who is this guy said, on yeah. Zoom? I didn't even recognize <laughs> you over there." Yep. My dad was sort of said, "Would you get sprayed by a skunk?" <laughs> <laughs> well, tomato yeah. bath. Shave your life, no problem. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's all yours, Michael. Hey, Marianne. Hey, buddy. Can you hear us? Can you hear us, Marianne? Hello? No, nah, she can't hear yet. She's trying to get her ear earphones to work. Um... Where were you? Where those Bloody Marys and all that amazing food and whatnot? Or where are you? 
Uh, what do you mean? I don't know. Were you traveling just now, or um, I, I don't know. I just saw some pictures. I don't know today. I guess that were like um, I don't know. It looked like you had an amazing meal, golf, bloody mary. Oh, or oh no, that was just my. That was like a whole week or day. Um, Bunch of different shit I did. Can you hear us? Marianne. Hear us, Thumbs no. up if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Thumbs up. Oh, connecting. Oh, here we go. Did not connect to audio. Just text her and tell her to re-sign in. Sometimes it... Um, Um, let's see. <clears throat> anyway, I'll see if she gets back on here, but, um, I past three weeks I went to church, but before that I probably took like a month off. Um, I think if I'm being honest, I uh, I had a little bit of a I just had a little bit of a moment of like. I needed to like get my my own head right about what church was to me or for me before I I went back. Um, this was I went the last three weeks, so before that it, I missed like almost a month, maybe five weeks. Um, and nothing personal with Zoe, really. It was it was a combination of things going on. Um, it was uh, a little bit of, I kind of dove a little bit down a rabbit hole with some of the stuff that happened with um, Hillsong and Carl, the pastor at that place, and that just the documentary and the news articles kind of went down a rabbit hole and that just a discovery. And you always know. Like this stuff in documentaries, anything on TV, anything written is usually one version, one side of a story of for anybody, um, whether it's a true story or not. But it's always being written usually from one side or the other. Um, so, you know, like diving into it, I was just taking it from a very neutral stance. I only did because I know Carl personally. And I just wanted to, you know, I know what I know internally, but then I wanted to see it and Anyway, I spent some time like <clears throat> trying to, I think, dive down the hole. Like, I, I guess you'll have to understand more. But for me personally, it, it took me off balance for a minute, and I needed to check myself to see if what I was, what my relationship was with God versus just any church, just a way aside, just church or the religion aspect of it. So, um. I took some time off and away. It was kind of tough because everybody at Zoe was like constantly texting me. Like, yo, bro, where are you at? Like, what, yo, what's going on? Like, haven't heard from you. I haven't showed up. Like, Cause I do a lot of stuff during the week too. And I, uh, I, I purposely ignored all the messages 
because I didn't want to lie. I felt like I was going to lie. If I answer it, I felt guilty about maybe the answer I was going to say. But anyway, I'm telling you all this because I think one, it's important just to do that. Maybe for anything for me personally, to take a step back and just take a look at anything in life that you're constantly doing. Um, your faith with God, a church you go to, good examples like a church you go to, maybe you go on for 20 years. I met this woman literally yesterday. Um, she's late 60s. She'd been going to a church for 32 years, and it was just kind of like we grew up Catholic church. It was the same kind of routine-ish every Sunday, routine. You know, you could almost rehearse it and um, her daughter's friend, who's not even religious at all, a believer, introduced her to Zoe. She went one time and then she had a moment conversation with God and she switched over and she loves it here. She likes to, I don't know, long story, but my point is, I guess, 32 years in one thing. She checked herself. She's 68 years old. She she checked in with herself and had a conversation with God and was like, what, what are you calling me to do? Do I leave this one or I go both or do I, is it time or, and she had that conversation and she did. She's been going to Zoe now, um, been going for four or five months, but, and hasn't gone back to other church. So I think with anything, we got to check in sometimes, even if it's, if it's good, nothing's wrong. Cause she was like, nothing was wrong. Going to church thing. She's like, but once I saw something else, I realized how stagnant my relationship was with that place. And how stagnant was making my relationship with God through that place. So I thought that I thought that was pretty brilliant to hear it in that that way. If somebody that's been going so long, dedicated to one thing, and I think you can relate that to almost anything, right? A long yeah. marriage, relationship, a, a career. I think careers are one of the ones the hardest. Like, you know, divorce rates high in this country, but like careers, it's it's like, I think more are more fear in walking away from a long-term career for people than a relationship. I think people probably think more often it's like, oh, I'll just break up or divorce. But like a long career, it's like, well, what do I, well, how will I like live, right? Like there's a, I think there's a little more fear to that, but I think it's important anything check in. So rambling on the beginning here, just to get into the topic, but um, <clears throat> I did that. I, 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 stop myself so that I wouldn't go with false intent. I didn't want to go feeling guilty about what I was feeling. I didn't want to go and have to lie to anybody's face about anything. I just wanted to take time to figure out, did I get caught up in some of the things that, you know, were bad about that whole situation? Um, so anyway, I cleared my mind about it. I started going back three weeks ago. And I'm settled. I'm settled in my heart. I'm like, I understand what I need and and want out of my relationship with God. Today, Zoe is the place that's going to channel that to me. Um, but I just want to keep checking in and, and constantly clear of myself, so I can understand like that might not always be the case, and that's okay to know that. You know, it's okay to know that my relationship with God's way stronger than any house that can preach him any person that can teach him any steward of his message so <clears throat> i don't think it's a bad idea to check that stuff and i did it helped me i got back i got back in my vibe a little bit i went back and i'm like i know what i'm going for i know what i want out of it um kind of laid down the terms of my relationship with the place and god so it was very healthy for me i went back and it was not strange. I think I always say in this thing, nothing, nothing is by accident. We always kind of end up talking about things that are relevant to us and timing and what's for us. So um, I went a couple of weeks in a row. And then one of the lead people there reached out to me and asked me if I was around Saturday, you know, if I was available for the day to help with some stuff. And I said, you know what? Yeah, I can just let me know. So anyway, ended up a couple of people canceled other things when I got there. It ended up being 7 a.m. I picked up Chad from his house and I dropped Chad off at almost midnight yesterday. 
I mean, I spent the entire day with the dude one-on-one -on -one, in the car, during the messages, back in the green room, just him and I all day. And it was a unique time. I've spent a lot of time with that guy outside of his work, if you will, um, as just friends, golf, whatever, dinner. But yesterday was unique, <clears throat> and it and I think it helped me uh, settle my my brain about uh, what I was I was kind of going back and forth about when we begin with why I stepped away, all the questions I was having, and it, and and I didn't ask him anything, by the way. It wasn't a conversation I had. I didn't ask any questions. I didn't try to like, hey, do you think? It was just the presence of our relationship. It was it was backing up the reason why I chose Zoe um, and him to steward the message between relationship with God. Uh, and I think that only happened, the timing of it only happened because I took a moment to get clear with my relationship. I gave it the respect. I gave it the time and I didn't fall into this pattern of, Oh, I'm part of this church. I just do whatever else. He's like, what are we doing? What do you need me to do? What do you need me to do? What do you need me to do? You know, kind of how I started. And I don't want to be that. It sounds a little, it sounds a little selfish coming out of my mouth in the past. Like, well, no, I should do whatever they ask. It should serve. God. I don't believe that today. I don't. It's like a Porsche at one time or another, one of many conversations. I don't know if it was on here, just her and I, but you know, the importance of being able to say no to something or somebody is okay. It's not, it doesn't always have to be regards to your best friend, your mother, a sick friend, a pastor, your church. Your, it's okay to not have the time in your life, in your season. It's okay to say no and it's okay still for them. It's uh, all that I think super matters. So it, it, it felt validated that the timing of that all happened the way it did. And yesterday's message brings me to this point. So I put cloaked in humility. Uh, obviously being with him all day yesterday, I went to all three services. I went to 10, 12, and 6 p.m. If you've, if you've, of course, you'll probably know this a little better, but if you seen 10, you've seen 12, and you've seen 6 in one day, they're the same highlights a message but he changes them and adapts as he goes through all three he gets more vibrant things start changing the more in it he gets real preachy at six you know a lot more screaming and loud so it's <clears throat> this momentum builder right so his message is like no ego amigo this is what he's starting this week but within there he said he, he referenced some things about um he was talking about pride and humility but he referenced something about the importance of humility. It's it's something that we we need to wear. Like just like you get up in the morning and take a shower and get dressed, you don't leave. You don't take a shower, get clean, get ready for the day, and walk out the door by naked. Like, could you? Yeah, you can. Um, how far would you get before you got in trouble or arrested, or people scream out loud or Oh my God, like get kicked out of your apartment complex, maybe probably not too long, but you know, using that analogy, it's the same thing with humility because we, we, we really live in this world of, um, this braggadocious, it's me, it's mine world. Uh, and I think even for the most humble of us, even when we get to the point of like, you know, it's not me, I don't, I'm not a braggy guy. But if you, if you strip it all down, we still have, all of us still have this little in us. It's why we wear the shoes we wear. It's why we wear the clothes we wear, the image we put on our face, makeup, the style, uh, the people we hang with, what we do as activities. Like it's still in all of us. It's kind of how we express ourselves amongst our community. Um, even way back when literally they had no clothes. Tribal things were expression of your character amongst the community. And it was a way for somebody to respect or have look towards you or feel towards the community. Uh, but today it's a little aggressive. I think it's a little harder to deal with your ego on a daily basis. I think it's a little harder to um, level out the amount of pride and, and, and 
recognize in moments that it's not yours. Uh, we didn't, nothing that's here, we, we didn't create any of this. We don't have a hand in building the things that are in front of you. And, you know, you do hear that from people time to time or friends. It, it's like, well, I, you know, nobody ever helped me in my life. You know, I built all this, all this is me. You know, I came from nothing. I built this by myself. And it's, and it's funny, it's like, <clears throat> truthfully, you know, how short life is, they say it's precious. You can think you have everything in the world and have nothing tomorrow. God can take it all away. There's nothing that we have here now in front of us in this moment that is truly ours. Um, so leveling out the playing field, I wanted to talk about that today, like, Cloaked in humility, leading with humility, leading with vulnerability, which we always talk about, but leading with humility and actually making the effort to put it on every day. Like cloak yourself in it. So it, so when you have prideful moments, which you should have still, you should be proud of your work, you should be proud of who you are, you should be a proud of a relationship or a deed you did one someday, but there's a balance between the pride and starting to talk to yourself in third person, the extreme, right? Like, did you see, do you see how good I just did that? You know what I mean? Like, did you see, did you catch that? Like that becomes the pride into ego. And then that takes us off course because we, we start to believe that we are the creator of our own lives, that my life is because of me. Um, And you don't have to believe in God to even like understand that's just a bullshit statement. How many human beings were here before you got here? You think the house you live in or the, the wood you're looking at, that yard or the car, like all the things we have are just remade versions of themselves for hundreds of years. So even if you don't believe in God in those terms, it's still the point of like, you got to understand that, right? So I think when <clears throat> you talk about the cloak of humility, like putting it on every day, making the effort and balancing it out. Um, super interesting thing I heard yesterday, which I don't think I even, I don't think I knew this. Again, I don't read, I don't read straight from the Bible, so I don't think I knew this until yesterday. But that <clears throat> before the devil was cast down to hell, he was one of the most sought after ministers of the word of the Lord until his ego overtook him until he started to speak in third person. And so he started to say how great I am. And I'm, I'm the message. And I brought these people here and I look at them all come, look at them all come for me. And that was moments before he got cast down. I don't, I don't think I ever pretty sure I've never heard that ever, but wow, what a crazy concept, what a crazy idea, right? The person that we free the most, the person that tries to, dig in our life and get us into those moments to go down those dark holes, to make those bad decisions was sitting at one time was one of the best stewards of the word. But then he started to believe the pride. He started to believe that the reason why these people are here, the reason why they're coming is because of me. I'm the energy. They're showing up to see me. And I think that's when, our pride overtakes our humility and you can get to the point where when it's all taken away, you can go into a deep hole. You can go into a deep depression. Like everybody wants me until nobody needs me. You know, it's like um, the retirement thing. There's a huge, huge gap in when people spend their whole lives in their career and they get to retirement and they go a little bit crazy. They don't know what to do. They're scared. They're worried. Nobody needs me. Where's my place in the world? What's my need? Does anybody need me? Like the work doesn't want me. My kids are all growing up. Like what, what do I do? It's like this moment. So and I think it's because we build up our lives in this way of <clears throat> we're a little bit too prideful. We're a little bit too. Yeah. Right. Here's my boy's bedroom. He just moved out. There you go. So there you go. Just sitting in the moment. Yep. It's like wow. Yeah. So I mean, we don't we don't prep for this stuff because you don't see it coming. It's no like fault to us. It's just you don't you, you live your life and then all of a sudden you're there and it's like 
what's my what's my thing? So if we can, you know, close you, ourselves in humility. Or, or you can live with some foresight in a more responsible way, not you all of us as humanity, in that we know that the seeds we're planting are for trees that we won't, you know, sit beneath, but generations down the road that we're passing on good faith and the word and faith in God and you know, all those types of things. So we can have foresight in our life. It's just that until you're awake to it, you know, you don't know like that, but you can, you know, Jason, there's lots of, I thought about when you spoke because I thought about our friends, Mike and Diane and like different kinds of people who like live the missionary life and travel all over the world, spreading the word of God and doing that kind of thing. And they kind of know, I think not, I don't know this particular couple, but I feel like oftentimes those type of people know that the children that they bore to this earth, that's only one of the things that they'll do or the job that they do in their small city, but that they'll always do great works regardless of if they're parenting or at one specific job that they're always going to be of service in all acts and all the things they do, whether they're out in the mountains of, you know, Vietnam or they're in the city of Binghamton. So keeping those purposeful, intentional, yeah. you know, human thoughts. Well, it's deciding, I guess you, that's why, I, that's why I preference the whole talk with <clears throat> what I just had that little experience. I mean, checking in with yourself and the things that you do on a daily basis, like the you over the world, like, what do you, what's your job? What are your habits? What do you do? Like, what are the things that are just like, they're happening every single day. You don't, you don't even know. It's like, there's certain things we, each one of us do and all of these humans do every single day, either out of necessity or just pattern. It's good to check in with these things and, and go, what is that relationship and to me? What is that for me? Yeah. And not to let any one thing <clears throat> define. There's so many yeah. parts of us, like a kaleidoscope that we don't, a lot of people think, oh, once they found something they're good at or a part of their identity that works, that then that's all they are. When we're so multifaceted, we're so deep, we're so expansional, like, or is that a word? But, um, we're, you know, we, yeah. we can expand direction. There's nothing, we can never, <clears throat> we can do one thing today and something completely different tomorrow um, in our real capabilities. So, um, not to let any one moment, one facet of our life, parenthood, career, whatever, take over and remembering always that, that balance point and all the possibilities. Um, I think another great analogy was, uh, like you ever thought you were doing really well, or you ever thought you were the big deal or you ever thought, and not big deal, like, braggadocious you're not lebron james i mean like just in your own skin like maybe at your job or in school or what you, you thought you were in your flow of your things and then you know you thought you were the big deal, and then you were around an actual big deal <laughs> yeah like what did that feel like you're like whoa shit oh like it's kind of that it's like checking how far the pride's going it's like uh did i pause are you still alive? Can you see me? Yeah. Can you guys see me still or no? Yeah. I think I just pause on mine. Um, yeah, but just <clears throat> I think those are the moments where you can, you know, you get to check yourself and how far prize you. I think it's I think it's great to like, I'm a very like talk myself into confidence, but talk myself into oh, I don't I don't need a resume to get a job. Uh I don't need the sales manual or the training to make a sale like very confident in a lot of things that I do but I'm always trying to check myself to see if I've manipulated a situation we've talked about this before that's what I know have I have I at least make it so because other people are not caught up yet or did I go into that thing with all the skills that I have to provide like do I go in with humility do I go in with empathy do I have some vulnerability in the situation, but then also use my skill with some pride enough to win something right in the moment? And then when I leave, not be driving home like, yeah, that's what I thought. That guy, that guy, these guys don't know what they're doing. They have nothing on me. 
I had him sold on the way there. You know, that's the moments of like a, a little too far in the pride. It's gone beyond pumping your yourself up. And so like <clears throat> I used it, we ended the day last night. We, you know, had this little get together with probably 25, 30 of kind of the church group. Some people had a little dinner at the ministry and then went around the room and individually talked about highs and lows. Um, and, uh, you know, a story that touched him, whatever. So it was a good share, but um, I thought to myself, when I thought about what, what, what was the take for me, like intentionally, like looking in my closet and seeing like those items, like I have to intentionally walk in there and put, put on humility to leave the house because <laughs> I've spent most of my life educating myself, teaching myself, understanding things, psychology, human interaction, human performance. Like I've really dove in this world because I really enjoy it and the potential of what we can do that, that I have many times left the house and forgot my own cloak. Um, I have many times forgot the house and sometimes later on when I realized it, I've already left, but I started to treat it like, well, I already forgot it. So today's kind of a wash. Like I like I left my razor home and didn't shave. Instead of being like, and what I think I've realized today, and even this weekend was kind of like Hey oh, Michael. Yeah. It's not Bill. left. I can I can I can pick it up at any day. I can put it on at any part of the day. Just like a job right now. I go to work. I don't wanna I, I leave it behind. I don't want to take it. If that makes sense, what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I leave this morning. I want to forget it. Well, here's here's what I would say about that though. So I think it's a little different what we're talking about, but I, I'm let's go on that because I think what I hear in that is that's what I said earlier about checking in with your relationship with anything. And your relationship can be with uh, the shoes I wear every day, it can be with your job. It's like Let's check in with it. Um, okay, why do I want to just forget that during the day? Maybe it's because I don't really enjoy my job, or maybe it's because I'm really, I'm, I'm switching. Work's done, life starts, and which is also yep. great. So I, I think either one of those answers is a, a good answer to know, so we know our relationship with something or someone. Like, why do I want to check out when I leave work? Oh, it's because you know what? Work is separate than my personal life. I don't want to bring it home. I want to use that and direct towards family, home, time. Or I don't know, I'm just over it. <laughs> you know, maybe I'm just I've kind of seen the end of of my excitement for this job. Um, and that's okay too. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit of a complaint, it just matters that you're checking in with yourself so that you fully understand the relationship you have with something. So the next time you go, because maybe it's out of necessity, you get this realization and this baseline of, oh, this is just my relationship. I'm not sad about it. It's my choice. It's my relationship. I'm going to plug in when I get there and plug out when I, I'm completely not done. Yeah, I've noticed that anywhere you go, just a lot of times it's better just to be quiet and listen anymore because I used to always talk to and like everybody else and people live on that stuff and then next thing you know it goes around a circle and you're this you're that and anymore just be quiet and listen now you look back and it's like wow i was in that circle before i mean it's look i think it's it's always good to like <clears throat> i think we talk seasons of life a lot and it's like we're never we're never who we were right we're always a different version today tomorrow but we check seasons. You know, I, I used to talk about checking in every five years, like deeply about who I am and like the uplifting of a place I lived, a job I had, like relationships. But whatever the timeline is for me, I think it's, I think it's always healthy to, to re check in and realize who I was and what I was and who am I now? What was my relationship when I first started the job? What was my relationship 10 years ago? What is it now? Because, dude, we're different people. Like, how could we possibly think that 
um, I think we talked about this um, deep with the relationship thing. How could we possibly think that when you met somebody 20 years ago or 30 years ago, our grandparents were together 50 years. Like, how could you possibly think that that brilliance in that moment, we love each other and that lasted whatever that was, is the same thing over here in 25 years. And then in, again, in 50 years, facts of the matter are humans just grow in here. Their brains grow. We see things different. Relativity changes. The pace of growth changes within humans. Intelligence patterns. But we think because we're together, it's just it should just go like this. When it could go like this, you know, it could just lock in with your fingers, and then all of a sudden one just starts elevating when the other was kind of left behind in growth. That's a good good enough reason for me to check in. Right. So like it's I think it's just something we gotta constantly check ourselves so we don't get too prideful or too caught up in um like this is mine, this is me, it's all me. Um, you know, you can get in this, you can get in the way of yourself and actually self-destruct or sabotage what's already planned for you and waiting for you. The successes that are already on tab for you. The things that the, the world, this world and energy wants to bring to you, your plate every day anyway. Um, so it's interesting to me. You can, you can really sabotage yourself when you're in, and prideful thinking, by the way, I want to get confused. Prideful thinking is is as much as I'm not going to go out. I don't like anybody. It doesn't always have to be braggadocious. Remember, it doesn't have to be like, "Oh, I'm the best. I'm the best at my job. I'm the best basketball player." It can be your pride limits you from any opportunity. Your pride says it. Oh, nobody gets me. I'm not going to hang out with these people. I'm not going to go out in LA because they're different than me. Negative pride is equally as dangerous, right? You can push yourself into a pattern where you're like, opportunity can't get to you. You've locked yourself in a room, hypothetically speaking. Um, and you've, you've, you've drawn off these, these opportunities. They're not going to come knocking at your door. So <clears throat> I think that's when you cloak yourself with humility. I think humility is infectious. I think, I think when you're sharing a real moment with somebody and you care and they care, it's infectious. You never, you never go home and go, ugh, God, that don't, that that really good moment was just icky. I never want that again. Nobody's ever had that. If you've had a real connection with somebody, you never go home like, ugh, had to bear through that. Ugh. But you definitely know when it is when you're around somebody that's it's not good energy that you had to you had to really like be there like it was hard to be there and like try to get through it try to fake yourself out of it and then you get home and you go oh my god if i never hung out with that person again it wouldn't be too soon i mean you know the difference but i can tell you humility vulnerability stuff like that never i mean that never you never go away like uh, I don't know. This is that just felt too good. <laughs> Nobody's saying that ever. Um, so yeah, for me, I think it was just like realizing one to constantly check in, remind myself every day, like put the cloak on, wear it, because we are prideful people naturally. We just are. But the, the human race is. We are built that way. Before social media, before all everybody, all the pointing the fingers, we want to blame. Way before that, way, 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 way before that, even when Jesus walked the earth, we're prideful people. There's a self-recognition pattern within us that we want. We want people to be proud of us. We want people to see that we're a acting member of this community. That's really what it comes down to. It's like, see my value in this community, in this village. Look, I ran and got water. I did, it, I did it way faster than the guy used to do it. I mean, it gets into the point of like, okay, you got the water. We appreciate that because that's a valuable part of this system. But nobody really cares if you ran slightly faster than the next guy. We can both get, you know, so it's like this. But we're naturally like that. We want, we want added value to our community. I want to be a member of this group. I want to be applying myself to these friendships. I want to say that 
when I'm talking about you guys and I say, oh, I love my connect group every week. I love it. People when it comes such a long way. We always have great conversations. It leaves me refreshed every week and gets me ready for the week. That the four of you, everybody else that shows up isn't in their world and their lives. What do you do on Mondays? Ah, I attend this thing, but you know, I don't know. It's pretty good, but Mike just fucking blabs about himself a lot. And, I mean, it's okay. I like it. I'm gonna still go, but you know, I don't know. Like that's the worst feeling from this human interaction. Like we want somebody to kind of brag on you. I, my biggest thing is I don't want anybody in front of me saying anything nice about me. I ran away from that my whole life. I hate it. I'm really trying to accept it in my life today. Probably this past year and a half, I've really embraced it. But I've hated it my whole life. Like, don't talk. I, no, 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 no. All right, I got to work. Like, see ya. But my my always goal in my life, my head would be, I just hope somebody somewhere that I've interacted with is talking nicely about me. Like, that has more, like, fear to me and hold in my heart of, like, I hope, I hope I didn't leave that relationship or leave that friendship. And I don't mean like leave for good. I mean like leave their presence. Like I moved. I hope those people still think well of me. I hope when my name comes up, it's still spoken well. And I've always thought of it like that. And I, I didn't, I don't, and if they're all like, oh, hold on, man, we do. And they all flew out here in a, a huge charter and there's 900 people in my room. And they're like, dude, let's say, say all the nice things. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Everybody out. So it's like this draw the line between how much I want of it. But um, I think that's everybody. I think some people like to have it in the room. Some people like to be told it uh, verbally. Some people like written message. So you don't have to face um, your accuser of, of, awesomeness face your accuser of amazingness um and then some people like me i think are, are, hope for it like the whole bullshit of like i hope a bunch of people show up at my funeral type idea um but don't worry about saying it to my face just get on with your life i hope you're good so <clears throat> i think because we're naturally built like that like we have the fight or flight in us that you can't get rid of there's things we can't get rid of it's part of human nature that that being present, if we prepare ourselves for that already being in our system, we can, by walking out with the cloak every day, we're already prepared for those moments to come up. For those moments of, ooh, oh, shit, I was getting in myself right there. Oh, yowzer. I mean, be ready for it. Um, and again, it, it, when we when I say it out loud, it feels like, oh, well, we could probably all think of what this, like, Brag and bodacious like character looks like if an athlete or celebrity or somebody you went to high school with or somebody I'm not talking about them put them aside they're the one percenters of the bullshit those are the the high level slightly narcissistic characteristics examples of the world I'm talking about just regular human beings that have regular jobs <laughs> live in this world regular that are dealing with prideful moments that are dealing with normal prideful moment stuff normal I'm I'm the shit Normal, I'm the best friend in this group. I'm the leader of this thing. I'll let you guys talk when I say you can talk. I'll mute you until I'm ready. Like stuff like that. Like, you know, I mean, I could run this thing where it's like, and I've by the way, I've been in many connect groups. I've never gone to again because like they don't have open talking. And I try to when you guys see, I try to watch you guys' faces even before you do the hands up. I see your face change and it's like you lean a little bit. I know you want to say something. I'm, I'm trying to like pay attention to that and just break up because I think when an idea comes to your head, it's most relevant. And if I make you wait for me to be done, it might not come out right in your mouth and we might miss it. But there's some I've been to, it's like, yo, administrator lock. Or like you said, I'll forget it. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> But that's what I mean. Like, say it. Say it when it comes to you. I think that's the most vulnerable real moment anyway. It's coming up. Blab it. But, um, yeah. I think that's what's on my... When I started to say, on my heart is, to, is just making sure we're prepared and getting ahead of 
you know, the fight or flight is, uh, we have three negative responses before we have one positive. It's subconscious, always. Well, what I see too, Michael, if you're comfortable with somebody too, you, you feel good about just talking too, you know? So there you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I mean, breaking down the barriers you're talking about, right? You got to be comfortable with the, the audience to be able to share. And I think that's, I hope that's what we do every week with each other. But um, I think the bigger, the bigger picture, Amber and I talked about like, you know, big picture stuff. How do you, how do you for, force a change of on the big group instead of just these small groups? And that's always the big, I don't think there's actually an answer to that. I think it's chipping away. I think it's being creative. I think it's, not be like doing these groups, allowing us uh, ourselves like, oh, how long did it take anybody in these in this group, especially, to start speaking comfortably? I think everybody has a different answer to that. But now think about if it was a dead strangers, you, that might be three times as long. But I think we should go the opposite. If we're training each other in this group to feel safe and talk, then we should be able to go out and start to talk to strangers. A quicker amount of time, right? I think it should be opposite. This is why public speaking is so difficult. People have the fear of strangers judging them before they've been judged. That sounds fucking ridiculous. If they don't know you, it's the best time to talk to somebody. They don't know anything about you besides maybe the brilliance you might drop on them. This is harder, I think. We know each other. I think it's harder as you get deeper with something deeper that we do have some vulnerabilities, but there's, I guarantee, even when my sister and I were the closest here, or anybody's ever been on this with us, I guarantee, guarantee it. You can shake your head whatever you want. Every single person on this has something they have not shared with each other, including my sister and I. And that's just because it's human nature. You get really close to people. It actually feels harder sometimes to share really hard, vulnerable things because you care about the conversation. You care about what they might think about the conversation. But what? Like what, what the fuck? Well, no, nobody here has anything worse than anybody. If all of us are clear about what we think that is. What's humiliating? I mean, if you have a definition of that, you might never share anything with us. I don't think there is humi- I don't think I can be humiliated at this point in my life. And that gives me a lot of strength and power. I don't think I, I can share anything with anybody that would humiliate me. I don't think that it, I can share it on public record and it would humiliate me. I don't think that if I told you guys something confidence and you shared it and it became public knowledge, it, it, it would touch me. It's because I've just defined what I believe matters to my heart or what it would matter to somebody else's. I think that's the only thing that matters. We keep checking in and defining our relationship with our job, with our person, with our world, with our surroundings, with all of it. Because that's how people get caught up in Oh my God, this government. Oh my God, this, <laughs> they're against me. It's like, yeah. or is your relationship with the idea of that not healthy or defined or lines drawn? Right? I mean, I think anything can be turned into a pretty healthy situation if we, if we took a moment and, and took account of being our, our actions, uh, where our relationship truly is, we define it. And have a bunch of humility within it. You know what I think too? I would love to hear what you think. <laughs> I think that um, people often compare humility with humiliation. And we're often taught that humility is a bad thing, right? And it's perceived as um, <laughs> negative or a limitation, right? But it's just... Um, it's really, I think, about reminding ourselves that source, spirit, infinite intelligence is always inside of us, 
like it walks inside of us and that's how we get to do what we get to do right and this is this infinite intelligence is always available to us and it's like that realization that we are part of a something bigger something outside of ourselves and then having i think humility also goes pairs well with gratitude and we get to yeah. say like okay i get to have this quality or this um i get or i get to do this thing and it's because I have this infinite intelligence that's guiding me. You know, I have source has my back and saying like, okay, I've called you to be a channel for this. You know, that's like kind of how I, I see humility and like allowing ourselves to um, honor that yeah. and know that it's it's being driven by something much bigger. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that. And I think that that's how we, when we can adopt this end, then that's how we get out of the ego end of like, um, yeah, like what, like what all eyes on me ours? or like that kind yeah. of thing. It's like more of like, it's part of my purpose here to be able to do this thing than saying, um, I'm better than you than because I get to do this thing. Yeah. Um, it's like, uh, what was it? So maybe Levi, I don't even know. Levi. So the, the idea of, I thought, I thought more is what I wanted when really less is what I needed. It's like, we get a little caught up with, I mean, I, look, trust me, I've, I've moved several huge moves a bunch of times in my life, including this last time where I had a house and everything, tons of stuff in my business, but I had tons of stuff. And you never know that until you move it and realize, oh, oh I'm telling people like, I'm a simple person. I'm a simple, like, I, it's like minimalist. Like, uh, really? It's like, it took me this long to move all this stuff on. It's like, I get rid of everything and I'm starting back over. Now, I'm, again, starting to collect stuff. Starting to collect this life. Hey Amber, that picture you just sent me ain't. I haven't seen my dad smile like that since almost about that time. That was a cool picture. Thanks. You got You're muted, Amber. You're muted. Sorry, I said we met this time two years ago, and talk about humility. I mean, strangers <laughs> on the side of the road all kismet moments, the fact that my brother and I would be standing on the side of the road and you two would be on the West Coast, like, holy crap, just the whole crazy, wow, and here we all are, like, faithfully every week since. And you know what? That's one of the biggest smiles I've seen my dad, because when we got home, it was just a couple of days later, or a couple three weeks later or whatever she passed, but that's the biggest smile I've seen my dad in a long since about that time, Amber. So there you go. Look at this. Look at that smile. It's crazy. There you go. See, sometimes I don't even know when you guys have checked out and start having side conversations or still talking. See, I don't even know that. I'm like, what the heck? What are you guys talking about? Oh, you guys are on the phone. I got it. Gratitude and no, humility. I, no, totally, yeah. Yep. Pride. I don't have to listen to this shit. <laughs> I don't have to listen to this crap. I have other stuff to do. Let's text. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, That'll be our next week's topic. We're uh, sharing all yeah. our Kismet moments. <laughs> While we're in the middle of doing something. Nice. How how grateful and, hum and humble we are. It was something Jason said, and I wanted to forward him that picture I just sent you that well, we share it to the group. forgot. He was with his dad. Share I it did. to the Zoom. I did. No, the Zoom. Oh, I don't know how to do that. You're in it, Michael. I don't know. <laughs> it's on the, can, you can't see the lifestyle chat while you're uh, talking to us? No, because I don't go on my phone while I'm in the middle of a Zoom call. Life, I'm on my phone on the Zoom <clears> call. I'll just, you know, I'll just put it in your file. Mm -hmm. Insubordination. <laughs> put it in my pile. Yeah, Thanks. I'm on the connect group file that I've been logging for the last two years on all of you. 
Was it just a big ploy to track all of you human beings? I've been hired by the government to put you guys on the map because you've all been hiding. It's one, we're all the wonderful people. I'm like, I got you back. I'll track these guys. Get all their secrets. <laughs> so they can work against us. Um, cool. Anyway, I don't know what I was talking about anymore, but... Uh, <laughs> we were talking. Of, we're talking about. <laughs> we were talking about humility and gratitude. Now, oh, basically, so about, oh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm very grateful that you guys try to listen one time. We're all staring right at you. I can't see myself anymore, so I don't know what's wrong. With I, we we can't see you either, actually. Yeah, but we, my video we can't you see you either, Michael. It froze and, and then it said it's on, but it's not. I don't know what's going on. But um, maybe that's why. I went away, my face, my expression went away. Everybody just like got distracted. They started playing fucking Tetris on their phone and texting friends. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. I'm not busy. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> you busy? No, I'm good. Go ahead. No, Portia, call me at call least me. on Portia, <laughs> <laughs> at least on at least on mute so we can hear you laughing. I mean, my God, I can see you dying. Oh. Yeah, no, I'm good. Private <laughs> conversations inside the group. Yeah, I'm just, just listening to this guy rant. He does it every Monday. It's no problem. Give me a call. That's funny. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> it's like it's like the board meeting. Well, Amber's doing it like she has her video off. She texts and obviously on the side. But, and Jason sure. just unmutes his mic and answers it like he's on this call. <laughs> like it was, it's like voice connect to his phone. I'm like, too bad. <laughs> uh, he's like, yeah, thanks, Sam. That was pretty cool, too. Anyway, what are you doing there? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be able to get back on. I was looking at the pictures and I'm like, well, I lost the group now. <laughs> oh, Jesus. 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 <laughs> but I could hear you, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Mike you. thought he was talking the whole time. Jason's not even listening. <laughs> he's, he's responding. He's resp he has me on mute and he's texting Amber but responding in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Totally agree with that. Uh, <laughs> oh. Sorry, Michael. It, it no. was not meant to be no, disrespectful. No. <clears throat> not at all. Uh, no, nothing ever is until it is good good talk uh <clears throat> yeah i just wanted to i thought a couple of things were i think timing is everything you know my weekend was um that kind of like anyway that like led up to confirmation of me taking the time to recognize something to take a, a look at it with a magnifying glass my my relationship, what I'm doing every Sunday. What am I doing it for? Why am I doing it? Is my when somebody asks me why I do it, am, am I telling the whole truth? Am I telling a version of the truth that I think they would be okay with, depending on who asks me? Um, you know, I found myself, I think, in a, a little bit of a uh, a blank space when after I was going down this rabbit hole, like getting into like what is my what is my faith like what is like what is it really i found myself in this like blank space of like well you do all this stuff like zoe why do you do that i started i used to know the answer and then i was like um uh, like i hesitated a little bit i didn't like that like i just because it depends on who's asking me like that's not the way to lead into something or or be involved in anything, uh, including your job or your relationship or your church or your faith or your God or whatever it is. I don't think, I don't think that if when somebody asks you about something that you do on a regular basis, working out, uh, you're vegan, you don't drink, you're sober, uh, you, you go to church, you're a Christian, you love God, uh, your job's amazing, you, you know, you're jerking off bull semen, like I don't, whatever you think. <laughs> you love to do like when somebody asks you about it no matter who asks you a friend a stranger your parents person you know maybe doesn't is not in that realm or won't like it when they ask you your first initial reaction if you are into it it should be the truth 
And when I, every time in my life, when I have a slight hesitation in my brain, I'm like, fuck. I got to check myself real quick. What am, what am I doing? Am I just doing this because it's my pattern? Or it's easy for me or it's it's worked in the past? Am I doing this because I'm trying to make up for something? Am I doing this because I'm trying to prove somebody to somebody else? Am I doing this to try to gain access to uh, a certain group of people? Am I doing this because I think it'll put favor in my life for other things? Am I doing this because I feel guilty about my past connection, my relationship with God and a lack of? Am I doing this? You know, like, like all these things come up. And if I can answer those all honestly, the next time somebody asks me, it's like, you Christian? Fuck yeah. Like, what does that have to do with you? Like, truthfully, and that that's okay. It's not a confrontation. It's, yeah. How about you? No, not at all. Great. Want to grab something to eat? You know, it's like, <laughs> everything doesn't have to be everything. We're so multi-layered and faceted as human beings it's like we don't have to hang our hat every fucking single time somebody asks us what our favorite fucking color is or you eat me oh i would never hang out with you why not like give me the coolest friends uh who would you vote for really i mean look i heard that one of the coolest things the other day was it's not about who you like or dislike. It's about can we have a healthy discussion about our agreements and disagreements of policy, not human. Right. The smartest thing I ever heard in politics in my life. Like, yes, please. Portia. I just wanted to add that, you know, you had said like, um, you're Christian, I'm not Christian, whatever. You know, it's okay to like for our beliefs to change as we evolve. So maybe like two years ago, you were like, yeah, I believe that thing over there. Or maybe that church was good for me, but now I've evolved. And so, no, I'm not a Christian anymore. Right. And so like, if that was to happen, that'd be okay too. Right. And I think That's great. sometimes people get so hung up on like, well, what do you mean? You had said that you were this, you know, but if we're like holding people responsible for what they said 10 years ago, yeah. right. And they haven't evolved in mm -hmm. any way, or even kind of like you said, re-evaluated with themselves, why they're even doing what they're doing. Right. Then maybe they don't, they have been disconnected. Right. And so I think the right thing to do is to always to check back in with yourself and it's okay. It's okay to say, Hey, you know what? I, don't it's believe that anymore. Like I've this, and maybe this is why I don't believe that anymore. Like, and just be open about it. And just because I think that at the end of the day, that's the most important thing is that we're just transparent and there's no right or wrong of if we do, doesn't make us a bad person or doesn't make us, um, what do I want to say? Like wishy-washy even. You are right? leading right into like leading with Right. Your it's knowledge. okay to, because it just means that now we have maybe more knowledge or we, we've been called in this other direction. And I think too, sometimes when we are in like these spaces of serving God and, you know, God is uh, a channel for God that if we say no, like you said, it could feel like there's guilt around it. Right. Cause we've been programmed that way yes. to like, Oh God, I, I feel bad if I like, don't, if I, you know, like, am I a bad person? And we start to question that. And I say, I think that's very real for everyone when we're being faced in that, like, you know, is God going to judge me kind of thing, you know? And it's, it's, again, it's like, okay, I got to follow what's, what's right for me right now in my life. And then yeah. God honor, I think God will always honor that. Totally love that. Yeah. Lead, lead, lead with the truth, lead with humility, lead with the, what it is today. I like the point you said, like, we don't have to have shame in the idea of a changed opinion or idea in our life. Amber. Um, yeah, I love what you said, Portia. And, you know, I, I personally, you know, after having 
grown up very, very Catholic, you know, forced down our throats all those years and things. There were lots of things I took out of it that were a source of solace and peace and whatnot. But I remember even like in the rebellious years, and I remember having this conversation, all of us, like, I don't know, two years ago at Christmas about like... I personally, I know it's like against the grain, especially, you know, if you're in a group predominantly with Christians, you know, talking about their day to day and things. I don't think that I have to be separate from a group of Christians if I'm if I don't name God um, or if I don't have a title or if I don't stay in any one lane. Like I kind of resent titles. I don't like things that are a finite box because again I feel like we're constantly expanding and contracting and moving and changing based on the knowledge we have and the variables around us at any given moment and um, you know I also believe that regardless what any Christian thinks of me or anyone thinks of me you know could be someone I could be in a foreign country and it could be what Allah might think of me based on me not knowing enough about Allah you know maybe Allah would really like me (laughs) but the point is is I don't I might not have enough education to know what my relationship is but whatever I call God me personally whether it's you know the universe and whatever created the skies and trees whether it's Jesus Christ's father you know the God that the Christians know whether it's Allah, Buddha, Bob Marley, it doesn't matter to me. I feel like the God that created me and allowed me to have this miracle that is my life right now consciously knows my heart intimately and will not judge me no matter what I feel, think, choose, or do in any given moment. If I am, like you said at the beginning, constantly questioning myself and making sure I'm just not okay and complacent, with any one thing I do, because then, then there would be a problem. And I would be worried about, um, you know, my creator, you know, and, and not to say I live without shame because of course, again, back to being human, uh, we're making mistakes constantly, but I think it's kind of a Christian paradigm to put ego with, um, you know, one naming God, knowing God, the only God, Uh, all those things when you could have been born anywhere and just have simply a different name for him and whatnot. So um, I like to remain titleless and um, just good and one with anything that is life and creation. And, um, you know, that adds to that love, kindness, humility, gratitude, whatnot. So. Uh, Hello. No, I'm not. No, I'm just, no, I'm just leaving this group. They're boring. (laughs) No, yeah, no. No, I can talk. Whatever. I'm just kidding. I know you shit. I love you. That was. I, uh, you. I, I agree. Oh, it was mad. I like the point on the. Um, I like the point on the ever evolving versions of ourselves. So how can we commit to a lifetime um, ban on on an idea? Like it's like, I'm just. I'm just a Republican forever. I was pushed out my mom's two legs a republican and i would die in that box of republicans like how you didn't know shit when you came out like what do you mean um i think i've had this argument many times with my mother growing up about um my fight of religion early on was always so if grandma had just like kicked you out of the house and you found yourself as a gypsy on the road and you met this indian dude and you flew back to his country and you pushed me out there i'd be hindu like I always fought with her in the terms of like, oh, I'm just where I was birthed. Like, and all of a sudden, I just got to adopt everything that it is in that environment I was pushed into. And no, the answer is no. Like growing up is, you get to choose the path that spiritually connects you most with your creator. And that's why I think I had to check myself. Being out here has been difficult for me in a sense that it's it's uh it's big city but it's it's big bullshit too a lot of big bullshit a lot of users and abusers of humans uh to to crawl your way to anywhere um in my industry in hollywood in in getting a fucking reservation at a restaurant like people are savages here they'll do whatever it takes whenever it takes and it doesn't matter who's left behind because when you're important you're important when you're not 
Nobody remembers it. And it's not everybody. I'm just saying there is a culture of it and it's it's hard to get through <clears throat> that sometimes. But the only thing that saves me personally is having a grounded relationship with my current life. Not who I was when I was 20. Because if I kept the same mindset of my past, I might be right in this fucking center of it with them. Right? I mean, we can't live in what we were. Like Amherst Point, it's like we're not, we're not the environment we were pushed out in. We're whatever it we want to be that brings peace to our heart and our minds and our souls. And that's kind of the point of devouring books, reading information, fiction, nonfiction, documentaries, realities. It doesn't matter. Reading creates expansion in your mind. It creates creativity and possibilities in the world. Traveling does the same thing. Speaking to people other places on Zoom, same thing. Getting your brain outside your your here, this literally this space will create opportunities in your brain that you you never know existed because you were pushed out and told the rules. So I don't there was a time not too long ago that you couldn't drag me to church if uh, it, there was a bu bucket of money waiting for me. They're like, it just, it wasn't the cards. I'd fight it. Like, wh why? You know, tell give me a good reason. Like, I, I was that dude. You know, what? like, I'm, I'm over here working my balls off to create my world. I don't got time to go over there and, and, and donate my money to them. <laughs> like, I just had this, this push um, and it's because I had a push against a, a, a building of people. I didn't have a push against a relationship with my creator. I think since I was very little, I, before I even spoke yet, I felt something that was like hot, like connected, bigger than me for a long time. I just couldn't figure it out. And that's, that's whoever put me here. That's what that is. I just wanted to fight this like the brand that was like we didn't make it but like yo we're gonna teach or we'll show you how that's how i always saw like different churches i, I saw them just taking the idea and then like they branded it themselves and they're like we need to get as many people thinking this way only as possible so you know fast forward now i've just been more present in my relationship i've been more in tune with it and I choose to believe um, in Jesus and God and my relationship, uh, but I, I, you'll never find me ever putting somebody else down that does not. I will never hold them to guilt or shame. Um, if they were and aren't now, or if they aren't and they plan on being, or if they aren't and they swear they never will be, because none of my relationships to this day are predicated and their religious beliefs or political for that matter so i think that takes a lot of us personally to have again humility again get out of our pride mind like oh well you know, i love seeing these dating apps well if you're if you're a trump supporter i will not date you okay easy that's an easy no and not because of trump or biden just because you're, you're going to stand on that post yeah, you That's could easily be like, if on? you like the car, you could easily be like, if you like the Kardashians, hey, like, that would be you. Like, how stupid. How something <laughs> real, like, hey, if you treat me wrong, I won't stand for it. How about that? Like, something, something with some depth. Like, don't ever lie to me. Like, I don't know. Not like, uh, if you voted red, sweet, get lost. Okay. Okay, stranger. Can you imagine if you if you owned a company and you only sold to the people you voted for? Like the side? Like you had a global company, you sold the consumer product, and every time they ordered it, you send them a note like, hey, who'd you vote for? I'm like Biden. No. Nah. I'm not selling you this computer. <laughs> you'd go broke, you'd go out of business. Like it just doesn't make sense to me to to some of the stuff that we have such pride in that we'll die for like it's so certain are some of the things that matter the least they just do like 
We have to stand up for each other, how we treat each other, uh, the, the information we're sharing with each other. Like, are we telling each other the truth? Are we caring about each other if we're being real? Am I checking you in my relationships? Am I checking you in my relationship with myself, for Christ's sake? Like, that's been a big one in my life for, for, for a while. It's like, am I checking you on myself to make sure I'm not just fucking full of shit? And but like, do I want to be back, right? I'm going to have to go and, back and watch like 200 videos now to see if you guys are ever paying attention after tonight. Meet up all night. Just going through them all, combing through, seeing if you guys wander, see if you're on the phone, if you're talking to somebody else. I got to figure this out. I can fuck this whole thing out for two years. Like, uh, dude, I'm just into myself. These people haven't been paying attention at all. This guy on Shark Tank, this is this is fucking hilarious. Hey Amber, guess what? No, yeah, exactly. Me. This guy in Shark Tank pitches this this idea, and it's a they're they're five mini recordings of you sitting right there, Porsche's in her chair in her office, and she she it's recording records her and she she drinks her coffee and she nods a couple times. She but she moves like she's grabbing something, and that clip's done. You can set it to pick up a Zoom call you have for work tomorrow morning and then sleep in and not be at it. Like the big ones where you don't talk, you just listen. And it's, it's her doing that. She's just nodding. Then she picks up her coffee. It's like a 24 second loop. That's me, Michael. I and know then you how can to, change it to the I next one. The I'm like, dude, come on. We're not, come on. Come we're on. not that smart around here. I mean, I'm like, I'm like the, the next generation is going to be absolute art. <laughs> Come on! You go to that meeting yesterday? Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you think about it? What were some of the highlights you liked? <laughs> like, you have to ask somebody else, trick them to tell you what, what happened. <laughs> well, mm. anyway, I appreciate you guys faking it. I don't care, actually. Mostly for me, anyway. I'm being selfish. I like to do you. So, listen or don't listen. Share or don't share. You know what? That's on you guys. You you take that. You deal with that. <laughs> That's your own shit. Okay, I'm good over here. If if my camera worked, I I'd be you see both my fingers are up in the air. Do I want to be right or do I want to be an example? Exactly. Exactly. You're right. You got it. Uh, <laughs> um. Anyway, get out. Uh, Next week, come on. I think I want to. I know I've asked before, but I do. I do want to hear some things that's going on in your guys' lives. Maybe during the week in the chat or something. <laughs> if it, if something comes up that's like heavy on your heart, and when I say heavy, most of the stuff that comes up for me is not heavy like I'm hurting. It's heavy like it just keeps talking to me. Like I can't get it. Look real hard out there. You see a couple deer, Michael. You want to talk deer next week? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, oh, you're not talking to me, Jason. Are you are you talking? Look to how us? nice it is out there. I said, uh, look real hard, Michael. I'm listening to you, but you'll see yeah, a couple. Yeah, deer I down can't there tell you're talking to me anymore. Oh. Or just talking in public. It must be the haircut got to you, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> a little breezy out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. it is. Did you just? Did they just dip you in wax and peel you? That you have? You are now hairless. Oh, yeah, yeah like right I down went, to the skin. Yeah. Who yeah, knew it, you had such who knew you had such great skin? Yeah, <laughs> it was pretty tender and I just said take it all off. Right. You look 10 years younger. Yeah. That's what you everybody look amazing. Says. Right? H have you yep. always worn glasses? Uh yeah. Yeah. Okay. They were just they were they were hidden in his beard. You couldn't see it. <laughs> if I high. didn't yeah, I that's feel true. Like, if I yeah, didn't like, wear glasses, I feel like I, you're like the first thing I noticed now. Yeah, it's like dropping yeah, a penny yeah. in a pile of snow. You can't <laughs> yeah, see you're it. right, because there's nothing else on my face. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see it when it goes under the surface. <laughs> but I figured to tell you, uh, you'd like this view, My Michael. Yeah, instead of looking at the city, there's, oh, they moved now, but I've been watching about eight deer the whole time. Good. I love that. Okay. Look, those are the moments right there. That's not, that's, that's given to you. Everything you're looking out at was, yeah. was, was put here for you, so. Anyway, you can't see him now, I don't think, but they've been been there the whole time. Oh dear. Um <clears throat> well listen, I, I, I want to challenge you guys just during the week if something's on your mind, heart, 
So anything just keeps speaking to you. Fun down. I don't care what the mood do is. Uh, please text it because yeah, I'm not asking you don't have to lead any of these. I, I would just like to start incorporating all of our shit, not just mine. Because <laughs> I know we always get circle around and we we get on the same page, but you know I start these because it's what's on and in my head, what what keeps speaking to me during the week. But um, I want to open. I want I want to just be fair to all of our thoughts. <laughs> I want to redirect the conversation for the week if if something else really needs to be talked about because I believe in that. So um, maybe in the group chat, if something comes up, just say it or text me personally and I can start it, but I want us to talk about it. I want us to talk into it. So I think that's my new transition for this next season of this thing we're doing because I think it's important that we all start to come in the same role that I've I've placed myself in um, because I'm not leading this group. I'm just facilitating it. And I want everybody to be leading at some point. So uh, yeah, I please, please text me personally or in the group, whatever you feel comfortable. Um, if something comes up anytime, be awesome. All right. Love you guys. Love have you guys cool. too. You guys have a good week. I got one. I got Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Ooh. Happy birthday to Jason. Well, thank you. Your birthday? Happy yeah, birthday. for you. Oh, is that why you guys were talking about on the side? <laughs> Baby boy. You guys have been talking about cool stuff on the side. We're just talking about humility. You're like, so <laughs> my birthday is week. And... 48 young. Yeah. Boom. Hey, hey. All right. Well, you All guys right. have an awesome week. Happy birthday, brother. We love you. Hey, thanks. You Appreciate too. You. Love y'all. All right. See you guys. Bye.